thanks for your nice uh, introduction. <laughs> um, so hi everyone, uh, my name is Yuoi. Um, today I'm going to bring you a new instrument that can perform high strong rate deformation. So I hope at the end of this talk, I can convince you that the deformation mechanism and the uh, behavior we discovered through high strong rate non indentation is similar like what had been reported through the traditional high strong rate uh, testing platform. <laughs> so for the audience who are not very familiar with non indentation it's basically a load cell. The load is added by the magnetic coil here. Sorry, let me change it to laser. <clears throat> the load is added by the magnetic coil here and transformed through a rigid column. And the displacement is measured by this displacement gauge here. At the end of this rigid column is a pyramid uh, diamond indenter, which will penetrate through a sample surface. So during operation, the instrument will record load and depth curve, which we can use to measure all sorts of mechanical properties like modulus, hardness, and fracture toughness. <clears throat> However, to measure material response at higher strain rate, uh, the capacitor gauge itself is not <clears throat> sensitive to, 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 to record data in microsecond level. So alternatively, what we did is, uh, sorry, uh, it doesn't want to go to next page. Okay, alternatively, what we did is we replaced this capacitor gauge to a laser interferometer, which will boost up the data acquisition rate to 1.25 megahertz, which we can record enough data in microsecond level. Hmm. So this figure here shows the displacement time curve uh, of the high strain rate testing procedure. So initially, the indenter will engage to find where is the sample surface. After it finds a surface, by the way, this procedure is the elastic deformation. And then we pull back the indenter all the way into the air. After the indenter settled on in air, <clears throat> we launch the indenter to the sample surface. So the red curve you see here represents the first loading and unloading curve. After the indenter settled down on the indenter crater, we pull the indenter all the way back into the air and move to the next location. So the whole procedure will take about 10 seconds to finish. <clears throat> so the indentation strain rate during this procedure is defined as h dot divided by h. h dot is the derivative of h uh, with respect to time. And the load adding on a sample equals to the load adding on a magnetic coil and the dynamic load. The dynamic load here is almost 10 times larger than the load adding on the magnetic coil. So the load adding on a sample is way larger than the load adding on a coil. So in this talk, I won't spend too much time to talk about the calculation details here. Uh, if you are interested, feel free to check this paper our group published recently. And uh, the, uh, like the main motivation of this talk here today is to compare the deformation mechanism under high strain rate non indentation and the um, standard high strain rate testing platform. So to achieve this goal, we use FC single crystal FCC aluminum and BCC moly as case study. And then we uh, test across all the strain rate mentioned here, starting from 0.01 <clears throat> to 10 to the three to 10 to the five. So at a lower strain rate range, we can maintain constant indentation strain rate across the depths, starting from 0.01 to 100. However, due to instrument limitation, uh, the indenter could not maintain constant strain rate at higher strain rate. So what we did is we achieved very high strain rate at the beginning of the contact, and the indentation strain rate will decrease gradually with increase of indentation depth and drop sharply at the end. So the representative strain rate of this impact test we define as integral of instantaneous strain rate with respect to the depths divided by the total depths. So the representative strain rate is around 10 to the three to 10 to the five. To measure material response at a higher strain rate, <clears throat> we measure the hardness evolution with increase of strain rate here. And then we use the most traditional definition of hardness, which equals to the peak load we can get from load and depth curve divide by the contact area we measured after the test from AFM. So to filter out indentation size effect, we terminate all our test at the same indentation taps. So here 
shows the hardness evolution with increase of strain rate in single crystal aluminum. We find at the lower strain rate regime, they can maintain a linear trend in log log scale. However, the hardness, uh, the hardness from the impact uh, test shows a deviation from this trend line here. So we think maybe the deformation mechanism at a impact test change or just the hardening rate at higher strain rate increases. So to figure out the details, what we did is we do lift off, we're using FIB lift out to uh, observe the microstructure evolution at a different strain rate on this, uh, on this trend line here. So for the indent deformed at lower strain rate, 0.01, <clears throat> we found a diffused dislocation structure. So with four orders of magnitude increase on strain rate, uh, some difference happened. So we see dislocation activities increase. Some subgrain on both sides start to form. However, most of the dislocation activities are still confined within this plastic zone here. <clears throat> more, mm, like more interesting, uh, with increase of one order magnitude on strain rate from 100 to 1000, something totally different happened. So we start to see more dislocation generations and we see the subgrain on both sides gets larger. And we also see this dislocation cell structure. <clears throat> the formation of this dislocation cell structure is probably due to <clears throat> increase of uh, local dislocation densities. Um, so to figure out the, uh, the, 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 the lattice orientations in this dislocation cell structure, uh, we also did a PED test, which is a small scale EBSD inside a TEM, which will give you the Euler angle at each pixel. So we, we, we calculate the point to uh, origin misorientation across this arrow here using first data point as a reference. We find this cell structure at the impact test will give rise to huge misorientations. Whereas in uh, strain rate 100 and 0.01, we didn't find any obvious change on misorientation. <clears throat> so once again, this uh, large misorientation probably related with the increase of dislocation uh, densities locally. So we think the increase of uh, the deviation of hardness from impact tests uh, from this trend line may relate it with uh, more dislocation are generated at higher strain rate. So um, as comparison with the standard high strain rate testing platform on single crystal aluminum, at a lower strain rate test, you start to see this dislocation cell structure forming uh, for the same sample deformed at the same strain at higher strain rate, uh, deformed by Kolsky bar, we find more dislocation generations, which is similar like what we find from high strain rate nano indentation. The only difference is we see this cell structure formation, but Kolsky bar, we didn't find those cell structure formation. This probably related with different boundary condition between our testing platform and uh, standard testing platform. So uh, let's see what's happened in Mali. Um, so in Mali, the hardness evolution with increase of indentation strain rate maintain linear trend. So we think probably the deformation mechanism dominated at the lower strain rate still persist at higher strain rate. So to prove our hypothesis, we did a similar thing like what we did in aluminum. We lift out the indent deformed at lower strain rate and higher strain rate. Surprisingly, we find the microstructure deformed at these two different strain rate look similar, at least to the first order. And the further PED results also confirm the point to origin misorientation across this arrow give rise to same misorientation. So all these two results prove that the deformation mechanism and behavior dominated at lower strain rate still uh, persists at higher strain rate. The increased hardness at higher strain rate is easier accommodated by increase on the pyrostress at higher strain rate, or it just simply the dislocation velocity at higher strain rate increase. However, neither of these two scenarios I just mentioned will, will, will give you different uh, dislocation configurations. So as comparison with the uh, standard high strain rate testing platform on BCC pure tantalum, the sample deformed at lower strain rate and a higher strain rate also looks similar at least to the first order. So once again, our results look similar 
like the standard high-strain testing platform, the only difference may relate it with different boundary condition. So as a quick summary, we find a similar deformation behavior and a mechanism uh, between the high strain rate nano indentation and the standard high strain rate testing platform uh, through TEM observation. <laughs> so, so far, all the comparison I shown are rather qualitative. So uh, let's do some quantitative comparison. So in the high strain rate field, one thing people really like to do is after they like shock, or impact their sample, they like to do a, a, a quasi-static tensile test on those sample to see if the material gets harder after shocked. So uh, to make a comparison between uh, like uh, our testing platform and the scenario I just mentioned, we come up with a new manual testing technique, which we call it quasi-static reloading test. <clears throat> so the first thing we do is still we impact, oh, we impact to the sample surface, and then instead, after the indental settle down, after the indenter settle down on the surface, instead of moving to next location, what we did is we quasi statically loaded into deeper depths, and then we compare the hardness depth curve between this quasi static reloading and a pure quasi static test to see if there is any impact induced deformation. So here shows the results we find in single crystal aluminum. This gray curve <clears throat> is low strain rate test uh, with strain rate, indentation strain rate 0.01. The hardness decrease with increase of indentation depths, which is like uh, uh, like a well accepted indentation size effect. So this red curve is quasi static reloading test after uh, we impact on the sample. So due to instrument limitation, we can only either report, record the high strain rate result or the quasi-static reloading. So we only record the quasi-static reloading segment here. So as you can see here, if we want to load it to deeper depths, we need to increase the pressure, we, or pressure or hardness we add on a sample, which reflect <coughs> the impact we induced permanent damage on the sample be, uh, below the indent. So as a comparison, this shows quasi-static tensile test after the sample got plate impact on FCC copper. So this solid line shows quasi-static tensile test on copper sample. And this dotted line shows the quasi-static tensile test after the sample got plate impact. So you can see this, uh, this result here, the extra stress needed to load it to further strain demonstrate there is impact induced permanent damage and impact induced hardening, which matches with what we find in FCC aluminum. Once again, in Mali, uh, the quasi-static reloading curve match perfectly with pure quasi-static test. So this reflect there is no impact induced damage in Mali. This also matches what we, with what we find in TEM observation. So as comparison in the traditional <clears throat> tensile test, so this uh, solid line is pure quasi-static tensile test on BCC tantalum alloy, and this dotted line is a uh, quasi-static tensile test after the sample got plate impact. They, over, uh, they almost overlap on each other, which reflect there is no enhanced shocked hardening. So once again, our result matches with traditional high strain rate results. So as a summary, uh, like uh, I've been um, provide the comparison between um, our uh, high strain rate testing platform and the and the uh, uh, traditional high strain rate testing platform through both TEM observation. And the uh, and the quasi static reloading. So the advantages of our testing platform is we are high throughput testing technique. All the forty nine indents you saw here are produced within one hour. So each indent takes about one minute to finish, and all the indents you saw here are produced within two hundred micron by two hundred micron regions, which will tremendously uh, decrease uh, the cost on sample prep. And at the end, we are a technique that can probe a surface at a numerous point and spatially map the mechanical properties in a small scale. 
So this complete my talk today. Uh, thank you so much.